Okay, I think you guys can hear me now. We're going to find out. We are live. So, <laughs> as I log into everything here, and it says we are live with nine watching. Can you guys hear me in the chat? Can everybody hear me? Let's see. I need to turn down my audio on my computer. I think you guys can. There's probably a delay though. So if you're in the chat now, yes, it's base God base. There you're back. So, or base God, base God. So you guys will need to talk to me. We'll get started in just a little bit here. Um, the exam prep page has the code. So we got 13 watching. Hopefully we get a whole build of people. I mean, maybe we'll do this again. Uh, I, I, I'm excited. This was fun last time. It's the weirdest thing to me is the delay. So I have to remember I'm watching like as I rub my hands back and forth up there. And so we're back in time. So who else is in the chat right now? And is everyone able to find the code to start the Kahoot? This will keep us from spammers. We might not make it to number one on trending this time. But who all is in the chat? Let's get some chatters going on right here because that's going to be the biggest part of the review. We'll be up. Oh, I see some more people have joined the Kahoot. See, I'm forward in time. You guys are probably watching it on your phone too. Probably wait till about 2.05 to start. So if you're watching this right now in the recording, we might just do some talking over some of the concepts. We've got people joining in. Um, but who in the chat wants to say hey? And let's think. Who all is here? We've got 12 people in on the Kahoot. So we've got 14. It looks like we're doing pretty well. What's up, Dylan? So you're probably, let's say some, feel free to chat. We got 20 people watching with 12 players. I'm wondering if a two is just gonna explode. I've got my green screen going pretty well. So hopefully it doesn't fall on me. <laughs> I've never, I know who, do you mind telling me who you are? Uh, BG, do you mind telling me who you are, BG? It's, do are you in my section? It's usually make. <laughs> I, I I'm so sorry. I I want to make you one. You seem to be legit, but I I just uh, Paul's section. Um, if if you, I tell you what. Um, send me an email from your UTK email right now. Um, so send me an email and to identify yourself and I'll make you one. Cause I think, so send me to BS at utk.edu and identify yourself. And so then I'll, I'll know. Um, but, oh, good. Hey Meg, glad it was super helpful. Glad you guys are here. We're going to start up. I'm glad I was able to get it going. I, I started the stream for like, <laughs> like 15 seconds and it was just me looking at my computer, like just like making weird faces. And I like was trying to get the stream going, but um, like it's it, it's just like um, it's pretty fun streaming, and I've got I've got my good Yeti microphone, so um, we got some decent stuff going on here. So tell me if you've sent that email, BG, and I'll I'll check it out, and then I will have confirmed. So we'll get some starter mods in here. So. We want to make sure we have some mods in case, in case we get people trying to spam us again or something. So I'm gonna hop over. I'm gonna see if there's any emails all of a sudden now. Like Brian, there we go. I'm gonna update email. Cause BG, it looks like you are legit. We just want to make sure. We got. It's pretty cool seeing all the names here. And. Checking email, one fetched. There we go. What's my email? It's just, there you go. We got more people coming in. What are the questions here to start? Does anyone have any questions? Like, send me, um, Dylan, send me, an, anyone who wants to mod, send me an email from your UTK to that and I can make you a mod if you're a student. 
So, um, I don't think we'll have as many problems this time. I, I don't think, uh, yeah, are there buffer issues? Let's find out. Buffer issues might be just your internet. It might be, or unless everyone's saying they're having buffering issues. So, maybe if there's less people, it'd be even better this time, but... Oh, yes, that's a, um, a really good. Hannah, thank you, Hannah. Um, you probably do need a notebook. We are going to work some math problems today. I was going to say that a little bit later, but um, thank you, Hannah. Go grab a notebook. Uh, I'm going to say yes in the chat with an exclamation point. Yes, go grab a notebook. That would be great. Um, yeah. Anyone who's just watching the chat right there, it's like he exclaimed yes. So let's see here. Do we have, I'm going to hop over here. Um, so I think this is the best way to do mods if you send me the email from your UTK. We've got Space Fox and Super Dolphin and Expert Eagle. These are interesting names. Hero Panda. And I think this time we won't have spammers, which will make it which will make it go faster. So um, really good and excited about that. Let's see. Oh, we got it. BG, you check out. BG, you are a mod now. Thank you, BG. So you are official. So we got two mods. Dylan, if you send me one too. You are in. Nice. Is everyone having an easy time finding the code? I think this is a better way. Um, don't okay. Don't put the code in chat. Does everyone hear that? Uh, Ahmed. I know Ahmed. Hey Ahmed. You're a mod too. I know Ahmed. Um, so don't put the code in chat. Even if people come in asking what's the code, um, I'm just gonna write that right here. Uh, Um, you put the code into your phone, you go to kahoot.it, so you go to kahoot.it, um, and put the code in there. Awesome, Ryan. Yeah, I got a lot of people telling me it really helped. Um, a lot of people were like, that really helped last time, so I've come up with some really good questions for this one, uh, that'll help you guys focus in, and we'll do a lot of output. So make sure to have your notebook out. And yes. Yeah, it's base god. Hey base god, if you see it in the chat, just delete it immediately. If mods, if you see the code appear in the chat, just just delete it. And um, if someone tries to just spam the code or something or put it out there, then just remove them or something. So we don't get, you know, the same thing as last time. Uh, this will be saved. It'll be archived, Lynn. So this will you can watch it. There'll be a lot of problems we'll be practicing. Looks like people are able to decently find this, and we'll see. I might do it again or something, but we'll see how it goes and how you guys' questions are answered. Do it. I'm trying to see if I have the the green screen might be a time. Oh, no, I got everything covered. It's it's fun setting up a green screen. It's the other side, I think. So, I don't have my uh, Game of Thrones. I'm gonna be like in darkness at the end when I switch to just me. I uh, so just grab the image. So. How's everyone doing? We got 42 players. Last time we had like 100 plus. We'll wait here another four or five minutes. Just ask those questions if you have them right now. Anything about the exam, about the Kahoot, if you're having trouble finding how to get in or anything. So this is uh, and Dylan. We got to check Dylan. Dylan, 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 Dylan. There you are, Dylan. And that's from UTK. There you are, Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. So we got it. Any other questions before we get started? So the Gallup poll thing, um, you're asking about the margin of error with Gallup polls. That's just a specific way newspapers and Gallup polls calculate it. Um, so don't worry too much. That's in the slides. It's more of, I mean, it, it could be on the exam, but it's very much just like for those incidents only. They have a specific way of covering, uh, doing it right there with one over the square root of n times the percentage points. So um it's it's just a specific way for newspapers and Gallup polls. So just use that right there, that formula one over square root of n. So I have to leave halfway through. Is there any way we can watch this later? Yep, it'll be recorded. Um, this will be saved till after. So we'll wait another four or five minutes to get started here. We got 50 people in. This time it won't be all kinds of crashy on this, I think. Oh, we lost some people. BG, how are you doing, BG? 
We've got some good mods this time. I, I'm seeing if we, where is the code? And so no one give the code out. It is on the exam prep page. Just go to the exam prep page and uh, don't send a link to the uh, exam prep page or anything. People who should know where that's at. Um, so everyone should kind of, we want to make sure we don't get spammed or anything. So um, if you are, go to the our, our exam prep page and you should be good. So I think that's, does that make sense, Stephanie? Are you able to find it, Stephanie? If someone really can't find it, they can email me at their UTK email account. Um, so if you, if you really can't find it, you're completely stuck, you can email me. Yeah. Yeah, go through my Pearson. That's a yeah. Anyone, yeah, and that's base guy. That's a great suggestion right there to tell people to do, because then yeah, if they're gonna find it, they're gonna find. They'll know how to do that, so they should be able to do that. Good suggestions. We're gonna give this another. Um, as long as we keep going up, we're just gonna give it a little more time. We're fifty eight. Can we reach a hundred? Can we reach a hundred? Um, I'm gonna look to see if there's any emails if people want to be mods or anything. We are doing great. Uh, update emails, update emails. I am excited for the exam. My gosh, guys, it's, I think it's on the second to last day of exams. Our last day of exams, Tuesday. Does anyone have mini term? I'll be teaching mini term. So who's my mini term people? Anyone else mini term people? Mini term starts on Wednesday. So I will be, <laughs> I'll be back teaching 201 on Wednesday. So give an exam Monday night. Wake up Wednesday morning and teach 201 again. <laughs> I'm excited about it. It'll be fun. Mini terms, uh, mini terms, a blast. It's so quick. Gets done in a few seconds. So it looks like we're gonna give it about three more minutes because we're still jumping on the numbers a little bit. But this will give people time. Are the final Scantron? It's the same thing as usual, Dylan. Uh, you do not need a Scantron for the final, but you should uh, get a piece of paper. Get some paper to work problems. Um, for this right here, get some paper to work problems. So go ahead and grab some paper. We're going to work some problems and have some scratch paper. So have scratch paper ready to work some problems. Um, the Scantron, I mean, the final is just the same way it's been as test one and test two. Let's give it two more minutes. We'll start at 206. We can do some review. Yes. Any other questions in our final two minutes before we start this? I think I might have to hop over back to um, to the... I'm wondering if it'll work properly. Because I'm going to switch cameras, and I think it puts me to the third camera, not the, not the middle scene. I go to the switch scenes. I think it's just going to be me on the screen for a second. But I want to make sure we don't put the code out there. So any last questions? We're losing people. No. Like we're going to start the exam in one, or we're going to start this in one minute. I'm used to giving exams. Like we're going to start the exam in one minute. Get ready. How long will this last, do you think? Probably probably nearest to four, probably like 3.30, 3.40, and we're going to do lots of different problems. Has everyone got some scratch paper out? Who all has scratch paper out? You guys ready? Okay. Let's get ready to go. Any last questions before we get started? Because I'm going to have a start in about 20 seconds here. Remember, the more you guys talk, the more exciting this gets. So feel free to ask me those questions in the chat. Feel free to say what you're thinking. Have a little bit of fun. I love doing this review, and I hope you guys do too. We've got 60 people in. Okay. So let me hit the change scene button. I think it's just gonna go to just me on the camera. Let's find out I'm watching it live also. And it does. Let me hit it again, I'm gonna wait about six seconds. Um, project three, I know my section has it graded and it looks like it didn't change scene. So I'm gonna go over here and go to this right here. Oh no, I know it. I need to go to face. All right, we're starting the Kahoot. And let me go back to this. Okay, just making sure we don't put the code out there. Okay, find the missing value. So let's find the missing value. Oh, this is a scratch paper one. So you should have to find the missing value. So you can see this right now. 
Let's see, we should be getting some answers. One answer right now. So when you see this right here, let's talk about how to read this output right here. This is chapter 22. This is the chi-squared test of independence. The missing value we have here is an expected cell count. Now there's a formula, so feel free to type these formulas in the chat. A lot of people loved the chat last time. The formula we have for this right here is, for an expected, is row total times column total over grand total. Row total times column total over grand total. So try in this moment to write the formula to get that expected cell count. So you will get a formula sheet on the test, but if you know how to do the formulas and you understand when to use them, that's even better. So row total times column total divided by grand total, exactly. One thing I like to do is I like to actually circle the numbers. I like to circle the row total. I like to circle the column total. And then I simply divide it by the grand total. So row total times column total over grand total. Very, very important right here. Be typing those answers in the chat. Uh, you can type the full answer if you want. Like some people don't look at the chat. I am fine with it. Remember, we're here to learn. So type the equation in the chat. I'm going to start typing it out here. I love when you guys type it out, but don't worry. I'll try to type it out also. So I'm writing the equation in the chat right now. So make sure to check the chat. And there it is. What was the grand total? Oh, there it is. I can look at back in time. And this equals. So here we are. We start off with a very mathy one. And there it is right there. Row total times column total over grand total. Nice job. Are there any questions on this one? I saw there was a project three question. I believe your grader should be finishing up very soon. Uh, ask your instructor if it's taking a little too long. But we should see grades coming in very soon for that. So the expected cell count is row total times column total over grand total. Pure math problem. And great job for everyone for finding that and getting it right. Ask questions if you have it, but everyone seems to be good on that. And I'm always giving a little bit of a delay here when I say ask questions because you guys will hear that moments ago. But if we're good, is that the wrong number? Did I put it in the chat wrong? Did I? Let me see. I might have looked sideways, guys. Who can write the formula out? Because I'm trying to run it also. It's row total times column total over grand total. And, oh, 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 it is that number. I just looked at the wrong. So let me just say this. I did put it in the chat wrong. Thank you, everyone, for noticing that. I wrote the right formula, but I didn't actually solve it because I'm just writing it out. And this does equal 261.895. So it is the correct formula. It is 261.895. And I just wrote the right formula with the wrong answer. <laughs> we all make mistakes. That's what we learned right there. So um, I think what it was is the check mark is right next to the 261. It, it's right next to the one on the right. So I saw the check mark next to it. And I think about how we grade exams where we put checks next to stuff. So I saw the check next to that answer. And my brain was just like, oh, the check's next to the right answer, not it's in the box of the right answer. But do remember, I did create this. <laughs> <laughs> so I did solve this out, and so I, I did I did create the right answer. Um, so yes, I did solve this correctly once, and now I'm just writing the formula. So any questions on this? Hopefully Brian can give you the right answers. We'll continue on. I don't think we have any problems. But the formula is the row total times the column total over the grand total, and now we have the right answer. Here we go on. Next problem. W wise Dolphin is leading the way. Also, if you are the person who wins... Um, come to my office. I'll probably give you like, uh, how about a $5 Starbucks gift card? You need to identify yourself and then better not be like three people saying I was this person, but, um, probably say who you are in chat too. be like, that's me. If we get near the end and we don't have 10 people saying that's me, but I'll give you a $5 Starbucks gift card. So a little, little competition right here. Okay. Which of the following must be met for all confidence intervals and tests? So which of the following? Oh, wise dolphin right there. Nice job. Wise dolphin. So keep the lead. So now you might be saying, uh, do we have an issue? Oh. Hmm. I don't know if those are bad chats. Don't, don't worry. If someone types random things, that's all right-ish. Um, so what we have here, now you might be saying to me, Brian, wait a minute. We have uh, going on right here a few things that could be correct. What must be met for all confidence intervals and all tests? Which of the following? And so now you should see some of them that jump out to you. Some of them should, um, all right, cool, cool. So there's some that should jump out to you here, which of the following, and I know you can only click one, 
but maybe there's more than one right answer. So which of the following must be met? And I'm going to turn off the, the message at the bottom right after this right after this question. So which of the following must be met for all confidence rules and tests? Nice job. Um, we'll keep reviewing these, but these are the conditions right here. Uh, we have randomness and less than 10%. So those are what I consider the first two conditions. There's no order to conditions, but we have randomness and less than 10%. Randomness means in a question, it'll say like, we randomly selected people. We randomly selected uh, people to talk to at the University of Tennessee. We randomly selected students at a football game. So you have to say in the question that it was random. Less than 10% means we've selected less than 10% of the total population. And what I mean by that is if we select 500 students, write that in the chat right now while I fix the uh, scroll at the bottom. If we select 500 students randomly at the University of Tennessee, how would you tell me that the 10% condition is met? How would you tell me that the 10% condition is met if, I, if we selected 500 students at the University of Tennessee? So it's just write it in the chat right now. We select 500 students at the University of Tennessee. How is the 10% condition met? Let's get some awesome answers to this question. I might have to answer it myself in 10 seconds, but I love it when you guys answer it. If you write, you say it is random. Um, so 500 is there. Great answers right there. And, and I said it was random. That's the perfect answer to is it random. Um, great answer follow. 500 is less than 10% of all students. 500 is less than 10% of all UT students. Because 500 is less than 10% of the total amount and the all UT students. And then make sure I even like, I like these answers right here. That And so the Dylan, Bay Scott, and Abby, that's what we want to see on the test. You could say... As long as the population of University of Tennessee students is bigger than 5,000, 500 is less than 10%. So, and I really prefer to say something like 500 is less than 10% of all UT students. And um, if we don't give you the number, it's pretty safe to say we have more than 5,000 students. So randomness is met by the question saying it's met. My Pearson doesn't always do that. I don't like it that my Pearson isn't always clear on that. But um, we would have that... And no, oh, retire. Okay, <laughs> I, I'm making sure everything's going smoothly. But does everyone understand the first two conditions and how they are met? And this is for confidence rules and tests. When we make a confidence rule or we do a hypothesis test, we would make sure we have the randomness and the less than 10% condition, which can also be called the 10% condition, which you just have to make sure you know it's less than 10%. So I think we are good on these conditions. We'll have a lot more on conditions because I, I consider them easy points. We focus a lot on conditions, theory, and math on this uh, uh, Kahoot today. So I think we are good. Okay, let's continue on. Make sure to ask those questions if you got them at any time. We have Wise Dolphin. Oh, no, Rocket Star Shark. Of course, the shark's going to beat out a dolphin, but Dolphin, you're still in the lead. Nice job. Remember, be quick, you get extra points, but uh-oh, if you get it wrong, that's going to lose points. So let's see what the next question is. Say your conclusion to the test out loud. Oh, this is a fun one. <laughs> okay, so you better just click quick here because you need to say your conclusion to the test. Now, this might even help for later ones. I want you guys to listen carefully how I do the null and alternative to this. Hint, hint for later questions. To do the null and alternative to this question, you simply put in between the two of these is independent is the null and for the alternative you put is not independent so to read the null you would say gender is not independent of breaking a bone to read the alternative you would say gender oh, i think i just made a mistake my brain's trying to talk and think at the same time the null is gender is independent of breaking a bone the alternative would be gender is not independent of breaking a bone and if you notice, all I'm saying is gender is independent of breaking a bone. Gender is not independent of breaking a bone. Now, why did I say all this? I have to say my conclusion. The p-value here is very, 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 very low. When the p-value is low, reject the null. With the p-value being low, all I need to say is I reject that gender is independent of breaking a bone. I have evidence that gender is not independent of breaking a bone. And as you hear how I say this, I'm just saying I reject null. I have evidence for alternative. And that's how we do this. Will there be any other tests besides independent hypothesis testing? Um, there will be, oh no, did someone say they didn't do it? I want you to say your conclusion out loud. I want you to think about it. I want you to do it. I want you to say, I reject the null that breaking a bone is independent of gender. 
I have evidence that breaking a bone is not independent of gender. Do you need to state your evidence or just say you have it? Um, usually you, you might add, sometimes we ask in a question like, uh, why do you reject the null? You could say, I reject the null because my p-value is below 0.05. My p-value of 0.0001 is below 0.05, thus I reject the null. Then a lot of times we say, state your conclusion in context of the problem. And the conclusion in context of the problem for that one is, and just try even just saying it to yourself quietly, maybe if you got people around, I reject the null that gender is independent of breaking a bone. I have evidence that gender is not independent of breaking a bone. So all I'm saying is, I reject, I have evidence. If I were to not reject, I would say, I fail to reject, I do not have evidence. And it would, this was not the answer, but it would be, I fail to reject the null that gender is independent of breaking a bone. I do not have evidence that gender is not independent of breaking a bone. And just to make sure as I keep saying it, the null is gender is independent of breaking a bone. And this will come back up later as a review question. Um, will there be any other tests besides independent hypothesis testing? The, the hypothesis tests on there are one sample mean, two sample mean, one proportion, and chi-squared test of independence. Those are the tests on there. One sample mean, two sample mean, one proportion, and chi-squared test of independence. So just make sure you know how to say these things and practice it um, because you want to be able to say your conclusion in context of the problem. That is so key. Say your conclusion in context. Are there any other questions about this? Feel free to talk to me as much as you want, guys and gals. So that's one of the gimme questions. Who was the first to click in? Who was the first? Wise Dolphin is back in the lead. It's Rocket Star and Wise Dolphin all up there at the top. Get ready. We got another one. It might be a quick one. Who knows? Interpret the difference. Ooh, I like this one a lot. What does this difference mean right here? Okay, so this is a t-test. So we have a t-test here, and a t-test, maybe someone will tell us in the chat, if it's a t-test, that's dealing with a certain type of data. We can eliminate two of these right here, since it's dealing with certain types of data. What, what kind of data does a t-test deal with? Maybe someone will say in the chat. I'll give it away at 30 seconds, and that'll be a big help for this question. If it's a t-test, it is dealing with means. Nice job, Dylan. T-test deals with means. So this is a difference between means. And it looks like the way we have this difference right here between the means is male minus female. Well, since it's male minus female, if male was 8 and female was 10, then the difference would be negative because 8 minus 10 is negative. So since this difference is negative, female has to be a larger amount than male. So the mean for female is 0 0.04729 higher than the mean for male. Yes, I think that's a good one. I give the answer away right at the end there. Maybe you're kind of watching, especially if you're watching in review. Uh, we can't give you the code, Dr. Gyro. It is on the Stat201 webpage. Don't put the code out there, but it is on our webpage. Go to my Pearson, um, but that's where the code is at. If you're super stuck, um, and my mods, feel free to... Um, Um, my mods, feel free to send it out. Uh, not send the code. Don't send the code. <laughs> Retract all code sent. Uh, but if you, um, you know, tell them, go to my Pearson, go to the Stats 1 webpage. Um, maybe I should have kept up my little sticker thing saying, um, exam, the code is on the Stat 2 on our webpage under exam prep. So, so there we go. It's, no, don't send the web page. Don't send the web page because then that's just as easy as putting the code. Don't do that. Tell them. They'll know. Go to the exam prep page. I think that's good enough. Are there questions on this? Um, I hope that covered it well. Does everyone understand? Looks pretty good on this. But once again, the numbers are a little uh, lower here. And I will say this. Everything is running smoothly right now. Like, we're not lagging, so that's very good. But um, so we're doing very well with the broadcast. But the mean for females, since females was the second one, we would have eight. Oh, thank you, Kyle. So um, since the mean for females was higher, the difference is negative because it was male minus female. So if you have eight minus 10, that's negative. If it was males had a higher mean, then it would be 10 minus eight. I want to make sure you guys also know when we usually ask you to interpret when we talk about the difference, uh, go to my Pearson, go to my Pearson. Uh, if any of my mods want to help them, just telling them the general things like go to my Pearson, your instructor, um, 
It's on my Pearson. It's on the exam prep page on my Pearson. Yeah, thank you. That's that's good help right there. They should be able to find it with that. That's, And so um, I think people from our university will know that. So great job, people. Thank you guys for helping out. And I think that's the best we can do. Let's continue on. And let's do it. Okay, Wise Bat takes the lead, beating out Wise Dolphin. Wise Bat and Wise Dolphin. And Witty Wolf, I like all these names. What is the alternative for this test? This might be one we just reviewed. Oh my gosh, this is a review question, everybody. Oh, this should be pretty easy. There we go. Thank you, BG. I put way too much time into this one, but let's talk. I put way too much time for you guys to answer it. I think the uh, amount of people answering should go pretty high and pretty quickly on this. But let's talk about these other ones right here. Um, we have a null and we have an alternative here. And th this is not for means. This is chapter 22. Chapter 22 is chi-squared test of independence. So we're not dealing with means. I've automatically eliminated two possible things right here. But what you'll notice is chapter 22 is the only one we use words on. So whenever you see this, whenever you see a mosaic plot, whenever you see a contingency table, it is chapter 22. I can't tell you that enough. When you write the null alternative, you are just going to put words between these. You are just going to put words between and you're just going to say something like gender is independent. <laughs> well, that's the null. Gender is independent of breaking a bone. Gender is not independent of breaking a bone. So remember, when you do the null alternative for chapter 22, it is in words. And you will just say gender is independent of breaking a bone. Gender is not independent of breaking a bone. And that would be the alternative. And if you notice, if you look at it, males are more likely to break a bone right here. If we were to interpret this relationship, males have more yes than females. And it is statistically significant. So nice job, people kind of following along. That was a review question I threw in there. And ask those questions if you got it. That's why I always pause on this page. But I think we get, we should be good on that one if you're watching this review and trying to learn some nulls and alternatives right there. Okay, let's see. Wise Bat and Wise Dolphin are, are duking it out with White w Witty Wolf. So let's see. We got Happy Wolf and Witty Wolf. <laughs> the names are pretty crazy. Uh, don't worry about Dr. Gyro. Dr. Gyro, I'll check my UTK email in a moment. Um, so at BS at UTK from, um, so there we go. A little slower typing that time. Kept fumbling over my typing, but, um, so email me and we'll do something right there. So uh, if you email me from your UTK, I'll send you the link to the page, but let's continue on to the next question. Yeah. Dylan, thank you. And thank you, Dylan, for informing people of that. Thank you guys so much. It's We don't want the Kahoot to get spammed. Thank you guys so much. What is your decision regarding the null? Oh, I love this question. I tried to be tricky right here. Okay. So what are you going to do with the null right here? Well, we need to find the p-value, which I think this question comes back to haunt us too. So we need to identify the p-value. And so what I always say, when the p is low, something the null. When the p is high, just let it fly. And I didn't give it away yet. I'll give it away as we go further on into this. But remember, a p-value is the probability of our results or results more extreme happening due to random chance variation given that the null is true. So what do we see here? We see that the p-value is high. That means our results that we observed were likely given the null. If I tell you that our results were likely given the null, would you reject the null after you observe something that you would expect given the null? The answer is no. When the p-value is low, reject the null. Below alpha is low. When the p-value is high, just let it fly, and you'll fail to reject the null. So we are going to fail to reject the null, and that's what we do. There is no accept the null. We don't never accept the null because we'll just fail to reject it. Um, so we either reject the null or fail to reject the null. Those are our only two choices. When the p-value is low, reject the null. When the p-value is high, just let it fly. And that just, just let it be, fail to reject. So that's what I mean by let it fly, just fail to reject. Any questions about any of these, remember between any question, you can always say, I have a question or explain further. But we're just practicing when to reject. And once again, a p-value is low when it is lower than alpha. A lot of times we assume an alpha of what? I'll pause here on this. 
At what point is it high? When it's above 0.05. Above 0.05 is high. And well, 0.05, and I think I more than 0.05 normally. And that's because 0.05 is the usual assumed alpha unless you're given an alpha. You can set your alpha at anything. So very strictly speaking, a p-value is high when it is above alpha. Uh, oh, thanks, Horizon. Good seeing you here. Um, so a p-value is high when it's above 0.05. And that is the usual assumed alpha. But you can change your alpha, and a problem could say 0.01. So then we would ask, do we reject at the 0.01 level? So that could have been a really weird question if I asked you, the alpha is 0 0.60. So if I put the alpha to 0 0.60, you could actually reject, but no one would ever put an alpha that high. You'd have too many type one errors, i.e. too many times you'd reject the null when the null was actually true. So thank you, Horizon, if you got questions too, we will answer them here. We love answering stat questions. Um, and that's a great question, Aaron. So usually we do lower than alpha, and I always we'll never do that to you on the test. We'll never put it right at 0.05. Um, some statistical software, um, it's pretty crazy, uh, especially with um, higher methods. We might actually create a confidence interval for the for the uh, p value. So we won't get into that here. But great great kind of knowledge question there. If it's right at 0.05, you would not reject because we usually do below alpha. If we're below alpha, you wouldn't you will reject. When p-value is high, let it fly. When the p-value is low, let it go. I like that, Meg. When the p-value is low, just let it go. Um, you will be able to watch this video later, Mario. And Mario, are you the one I talk to in Stat Lab all the time? I'll make you a mod. I think you are, right? I think, Mario, that's you. And we're going to go to the next question here. Wise Dolphin is back in the lead, and Wise Bad is back at it. Let's continue on to the next question here. What is what is p value for this test? <laughs> what is the p value for this test? Oh, of course it put my random questions in this order. So what is the p value? This should be a nice and easy one. Now, looking at this problem right here, we have a few different things to look at. We have in r squared. And r squared's not really being covered right now. r squared is the percent of variation in y explained by the model or the x's, whatever we're interpreting. r squared is percent of variation in y explained by model or x's. We have the degrees of freedom, which relates to what chi-squared distribution we are using. So this is a chi-squared one, more on that later. Chi-squared one degrees of freedom. We see the chi-squared test statistic. Now for our class, we use my Pearson. So I always tell my students, the Pearson has your p-value. So when you look at this right here, the Pearson has your p-value, and we've actually given away the answer now. Nothing wrong with that. But the Pearson has your p-value. So when you look at the output, remember the Pearson has your p-value, and a p-value is a probability of our results, or results more stream, by random chance variation given the null is true. So the Pearson has your p-value. The Pearson has your p-value. So we are using, and the reason for this is, is because that chi-squared is the sum of all the cell chi-squareds. I don't have a review question on that, but the way we get the chi-squared test statistic is to sum up all the cell chi-squareds. So all your individual cell chi-squareds are summed up into the Pearson chi-squared test statistic that is then plotted on the appropriate chi-squared distribution with the right amount of degrees of freedom, and you shade to the right to find your p-value. We can't really do that on the test because we don't use tables or stuff in this class. We want you to look at p-values and know it because that's how we usually do it via results. So let's see, we just have randomness. Sorry, I was just seeing what was chatted and everything. So let's keep going. If you have questions, ask them, but let's see who's in the lead. Wise Dolphin, nice job, Wise Dolphin. Keeping that lead, but Happy Wolf we have not seen yet. And Epic Cat, Wise Dolphin, you are doing extraordinarily well. Keep it up. Okay, let's continue on. Which of the following must be met for all quantitative data means, tests, and intervals? So which of the following must be met? It's just... Which of the following must be met for all quantitative data means and test intervals? So Horizon, hope you're still in here. Ask those questions if you got them. It's kind of cool having someone in here who maybe is not in the class. But what we're talking about here is quantitative data make a confidence roll for the mean or the difference between the means. And when you have quantitative data, it actually would be best, best viewed in a histogram. So when you view something in a histogram, a lot of the techniques we're using in this class require the histograms to look kind of a certain way, but we do have the central limit theorem. And that central limit theorem gives a big hint 
because the central limit theorem knows us no makes it so that we can say that things are nearly normal so yeah it's unfortunately um i believe we're going to send this off to ods let me type this out we will be sending this to ods after the recording also i think youtube will uh put in after i think I think so. I think we should be able to get this closed caption. And so I think we should have it working. With this in mind, there we go. I think my mods are going to jump into action here and make sure everything is good. So with this in mind right here, when we look at this right here, thank you mods. And you can remove anything or do anything as long as if it seems random or craziness. So what we have going on right here is we have two different tests we can be doing right here, a test or an interval. And when we have quantitative data, this is what I ask of my students. I'll give you a scenario here. You guys ready? Let's do a practice problem. I want to see those answers in the chat. So get ready if you're at home and think about this. I'm going to go out and collect data on UT students. I'm going to ask them how many times they go to McDonald's a week, how many times they go to McDonald's a week to find out what is the true average. I'm going to make a confidence interval to figure out what is the true average amount of time UT students go to McDonald's a week. So tell me, what is condition one? We've already reviewed this. What is condition one? I want to see in the chat. It should we start popping up any moment here? So condition one, and it's probably popping in the chat. So I'm going to pretend you guys said it. Well, and there is no true condition one. I like to say random in my class. We say random. And then condition two, Stephanie, that's all right. There is no one or two to these. There's actually no order. But I like to use random and then 10% because Everything is random, 10% as we talked about earlier. So those are the conditions, random, and then 10%. So we got to randomly talk to students and talk to less than 10% of all UT students. And then we pause. And that's not a condition. We're just going to pause here before we say what the third condition is. Since I'm talking to UT students and asking them how many times they go to McDonald's a week, this is quantitative. And the third condition would be the nearly normal condition. But if I asked UT students, do you own a dog? What would the third condition be? If I asked UT students, do you own a dog? What would the condition be? Because it's, do you own a dog now? I should probably start to see those answers pop up in the chat. It is success failure. Because that's a categorical question, do you own a dog? So when you have quantitative stuff, it's the nearly normal condition. And do remember that with quantitative, if you have two quantitative distributions, we check it twice for both histograms. So you can look at the histograms, you can see if they look normal. Also, if we have a large N, we are good because this is also the large enough N goes into the nearly normal. If it's slightly skewed, then the N needs to be at least 25. If it's heavily skewed, the N needs to be at least 100. So that's what we do right there is we look at the shape of the histogram and by the central limit theorem, the distribution of the means of sample size 25 or larger will be nearly normal given that it's lightly skewed. So just look at your distribution. If it looks lightly skewed, then the sample size needs to be at least 25. If it's heavily skewed, the distribution needs to have a sample of at least 100 for the distribution of sample means to be nearly normal. And because we're not actually looking at your original distribution, it's the distribution of the sample mean. So that's got this question right here. Any last questions, always put them in the chat. I'll answer everything I see in the chat. When is this over? Probably about 4.30, Gaming with Crystal. Thank you for stopping by, or if you're a UT student, appreciate it. Epic Cat comes out of nowhere. Epic Cat, wow. Oh my gosh, six players have a four answer streak. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you have a PhD in Horizon? What is the missing value of the difference? This is a good one right here. So we've got the missing value of the difference right here. This this one can be solved a lot of different ways. This one can be solved a lot of different ways. So and we'll we'll take the PhD Horizon. We'll, it'll be the prize for the Kahoot today, a, a free PhD. So <laughs> if you ask me other topics, I wouldn't know them either. I, I just, all I do is statistics. So let's talk about the two ways to solve this problem. The difference right here is actually the mean of male minus the mean of female. The final is not cumulative, just, just all exam three material. And then there are the 
Um, there are the uh, tools and techniques questions. There's tools and techniques questions. I'll mention that maybe after this question. Thank you for asking though, John. Um, with male minus female, we're looking at the difference. Now here's a good way to solve it. If you notice, we have a confidence interval right here. This confidence interval right here, I want people to start typing this answer in the chat when you figure it out. Because if you have a confidence interval, the center of it is going to be the estimate. And here we're trying to estimate the difference. So the difference is the center of that interval. How would you find the center of that interval? I'll type it in the chat. You would do upper plus lower, and you divide that by two. And hopefully I can get this in the chat soon enough. I'm gonna have to annotate some of the numbers maybe. But what we have here is upper plus lower divided by two. And I'm gonna lose it on this screen, but I have it on the other screen. And 0 0.0184 and divide by two. And so what you should get from this is you should have gotten negative 0.23. And if you can think about this, I just want you to do some kind of simpler math on it. If you have 18 and 27, then 23 is about in the middle of those numbers. And if you do the math exactly, this will be the exact answer. So it seems like a lot of people got it. The difference right there is actually the center of the confidence interval. So that confidence interval is created from the difference. This is the formula y bar one minus y bar two plus or minus t star times the standard error of the difference. And so the center of that interval right there was the difference. That was one way to solve it. You could have also solved it using the T statistic and we'll have something like that later on. So there's some fun questions coming up. I hope we get, what's the next one be fun? Is it gonna be one of the fun ones? Epic Cat, oh no, Wise Dolphin is down for the moment, but Epic Cat is leading the way. Who, if you're them in the chat, just say, hey, that's me. What is the missing p-value? Oh, this is a great question. So p-values, we have two of these. So how do we find the missing p-value here? Now there are three alternatives. There is the less than, the greater than, and the does not equals. So I want you to tell me this alternative, someone in the chat be like, that's the what alternative. You guys are probably answering right now, but that is the what alternative right now. So that is, so my mods will handle it. It's, well, you can find it on the Pearson, on the exam prep page. Mods, if you handle that, thank you very much, all those questions. So with this right here, we have the less than, the greater than, the does not equals to. So this is the less than alternative. If you notice, this would be the area shaded right here. Now it's hard to see the does not equals, but the does not equals in this instance is going to be what the less than. So the does not equals is what the less than alternative. So if we have the less than alternative and we were to look at the does not equals, so here's your less than alternative, here's your does not equals, what is the does not equals? It's what the less than in this instance. It's going to be, I'm waiting for someone to say it in the chat. Uh, actually, you got it. That's one way of doing it right there too. And I, I think I carried it out to a note. No, no, that's, that, base God, you are correct. That's another way of doing it. It's also double it. That's what I was getting out there. If you double the answer of point. 00205, you will get the right answer. So the answer, nice job. So make sure to just send them to the right spot so that they don't spam us or anything. <laughs> so we're just making sure that everyone, we don't get spammed or anything. Sorry, Saint Xander. Thank you, mods. Thank you, mods, very much. So just, you can keep informing them. But let's review this. Let's review the concept of p-values. The less than alternative and the greater than alternative p-values add up to what? The less than alternative and greater than alternative add up to what? What do the less than and greater than alternative add up to? I want to see it in the chat. I want to see all those answers. If you have the less than and greater than, they add up to what? They add up to one. Nice job in the chat right there. Because you're just shading the whole curve. You're shading the whole entire curve. But then the does not equals alternative is always double the smallest. I was kind of using the harder way to get to it, um, but the does not equals alternative is always double the smallest. So if you double um, 0 0.00205, you get 41 or 0 0.0041. So that's one way of looking at right there. But remember, your does not equals is double the smallest. Exactly, Lynn, great job. So the, does, the, the smaller one is half of the does not equals. Um, let's do a video game scoot. I probably would. St. Xander, or if you're, you can throw a video game question there if you want. I'll take it. I'll take, 
Maybe I can answer it, hopefully. Epic Cat leading the way, Rocket Star Shark. Oh, this is Wise Dolphin and Wise Bat, come back. Rockstar Shark is a cheater, oh no. <laughs> hopefully not, hopefully not. Let's continue on. Okay, what is the equation for degrees of freedom in this problem? Ah, so how are we gonna get the degrees of freedom here? Now I have my class say something. I want you to say this to yourself whenever you encounter this problem. I want you to, and be careful, I'm not going to say the right answer here. This is the way to do it. The formula is rows minus one times columns minus one. Rows minus one times columns minus one. But here's what I say. I say, Brian, this is a blank by blank. I want someone to say me and tell me in the chat. Uh, <laughs> I'll answer that between the in-between. Uh, this is a blank by blank. Oh no, base god. Uh, well, careful, Lynn. No, no, it's not n minus one. Brian, this is a two by two. Aaron, you are right. Brian, this is a two by two. Now, if this is a two by two, it turns into a one by one. A two by two turns into a one by one. The degrees of freedom here is one times one. So just say to yourself, look at this. Brian, this is a two by two. The degrees of freedom will be one times one. Oh, you did. It's B-R-I-N. You are correct. What video game in 2005? Is that... I do not. I'm trying to think what came out in 2005. It's a while ago now. <laughs> so, Brian, this is a 2 by 2 That turns into a 1 by one and thus there is one degree of freedom. This is a 2 by 2 and it thus is 1 by one So, good job. Remember, the degrees of freedom are rows minus one times columns minus one. You do get the formula sheet, but don't, don't rely too heavily on it. Just remember, oh, that mosaic plot is a two by two. That means two by two is one by one. And that's the degrees of freedom formula there. So just remember that. That's the trick. If it was a, try this one. If it was a four by two, what would be the degrees of freedom? If it was a four by two, what would be the degrees of freedom? I can't know. You can tell us, St. Xander. Exactly. Four by two would be three by one, which is three. Three degrees of freedom. Yeah, I guess we'll stop the video game talk. Thanks thanks for stopping by, Jacob, though. Oh, right. Well, there's a lot of those that came out. So four by two is three by one. Let's try one more. Let's just make sure everyone has it. What if it was a 10 by 10? What if we had a humongous 10 by 10? Brian, this is a 10 by 10. The degrees freedom formula is, and then just drop them both, if it was a 10 by 10, the degrees of freedom would be 9 times 9. And, and make sure, and so don't write that for the degrees of freedom, that is just the formula, thus the degrees of freedom are, and I just want to make sure everyone knows who's watching this, that would not be the degrees of freedom, but that would be the formula for it, it'd be 81, correct. And I think it's one of the easiest questions on the test. Anytime someone misses that, I'm like, no, and maybe I just sped you up there so you can be like, yes. It's a 10 by 10, degrees of freedom are 9 times 9, and the formula. Nice job, everybody. Um, exactly. Cool, we'll get, and make sure to tell them, the, the code is on the Stat 201 exam prep page. Epic cat, oh my gosh. Now that's definitely an epic cat right there. Where, where are the dogs at? Because they're not leading the way right now. Come on. Come on, Siberian Husky or something, or Golden Retriever. What is the null for this test? Ah, this is another review question. This is the last we'll do of the nulls and alternatives. It really bunched these up right here. Make sure to ask questions if you got them. Probably went too much on what's the null alternative, but this is one of my favorite questions um, to get down. I think it's one of the easiest ones that I see people get wrong on the test. Um, just because when we do the null alternative for this one, it's just words. There will be one later on that will actually be a null with notation. So you will see later on there will be a null with notation. Remember the trick here. When we do the null, we simply say, for this chapter 22, chi-square test of intendments, x is independent of y. The alternative would be, x is not independent of y. So this is not dealing with means right here, it's just looking at two categorical variables, which is actually the fourth condition, which is count data. So we would have right here, the null would be, gender is independent of breaking a bone. And this is our previous one where we rejected the null. So with this in mind, and we just reviewed, Brian, this is a two by two. That turns it into a one by one with one degree of freedom. And we definitely reject the null here. There is, we reject the null that gender is independent of breaking a bone. 
and we have evidence that gender is not independent of breaking a bone. Now, if they'd ask you to talk about the relationship a little bit, you could say right here that males look more likely to break a bone. If you see the males right here, they are more likely to break a bone from this data. So males are more likely to have broken a bone. That's kind of the extent of the relationship. So nice job, good review questions. Great job on everybody trying to get this down and being able to do it. Um, you could, Meg, you could definitely say that. Nice job, Meg. You could say gender is dependent on breaking a bone. So that is fine too, because that's not independent. Great job, that works also. There's a lot of other ways to say it too. I always keep to is independent, is not independent. Um, but there are other ways that kind of work. I don't want to go over all of them lest I put like, but that would work. We should give full points for that on the test for the alternative. Um, after, the, after the Kahoot, I would definitely watch the other review videos, the chapter review videos and the test prep review videos. Definitely, definitely do those. Epic Cat, oh my gosh. That is Happy Wolf though is trying. Who's who's Epic Cat in the chat? Who is Epic Cat? I didn't know these answers. I think it's our PhD person. Find the missing value. Oh, we're back to figuring out the missing value. So we got another one where you need to have a pen and paper. So first, I want you guys to be saying in the chat, or if you've already found it, you might be working it. You should be like, this missing value is a something. This missing value is a cell chi squared. Anytime you see a blank on the test, you should figure out where that blank is at. This missing value is a cell chi squared. So it's a cell chi squared because it's the third one right here. And with that in mind, we need to identify how to solve it. Well, we could go to the formula sheet and we would see that a cell chi squared is observed minus expected squared over expected. And I've had a lot of people tell me, wait, I don't have an observed. But the observed here is just the count. So the count is the observed. So what we would do now is we would take observed minus expected, which is going to be 3.895. And I'll write this in the chat. So observed of 128 minus expected of 131.895. And we're going to square this difference and we're going to divide this by the expected. Observed minus expected squared, observed minus expected, and quantity squared over expected. Observed minus expected squared over expected. And that is quantity squared. I want to make that clear. And you do get a formula sheet to check everything. So use your formula sheet. Use your formula sheet. And definitely take your time. If you're stuck on one of these, I do try to give them away. How many people got the answer? Nice job. I love seeing that. Nice. That, that should make you feel good. Like I just kind of solved like something that could be on the test. I was able to get that right there. Good job. Um, that's just pure formula sheet, knowing how to do the observed minus expected squared over expected to get the right answer. I don't know if there's any questions on these. Mary, you can always ask questions between the questions. I think we're good. Type those questions. I'll answer them all. I think everyone's so serious right now since this is the final, but don't worry. We'll have a little bit of fun. Epic cat, whoa. I wonder if they've gotten them all correct. Is this question number 15 or it's 14 and they're already past 14,000 points. To make it comfortable for the true proportion, what is a condition that must be met? Ah, <laughs> it does make people serious, doesn't it? So which of these must be met for a confidence interval for the true proportion? A little bit of a review question here too. Confidence interval for the true proportion. And I see a lot of different ones on here. Well, let's start eliminating ones. Nearly normal was something we just reviewed. The nearly normal condition is for quantitative data. So that's wrong. It, this is true proportion, so it's categorical. I also see expected cell count. Expected cell count looks like that last question where we had expected cell counts, which is the chi-squared test of independence. What is count data? Count data condition means we need categorical, categorical. And that's why we always have the count over there in that that thing. It, it's Categorical, categorical is met when you have two categorical variables like breaking a bone and gender. And that leaves success failure. Um, we need at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures. Um, NP hat, NQ hat, greater than or equal to 10. So for a confidence interval, it would be NP hat, NQ hat, greater than or equal to 10. And that is the success failure condition for testing, confidence, testing or confidence rolls for proportions. Good stuff. My computer, it's, it's taking off. It's making a little bit of a fan going loud noise. But we are doing well. We don't have a uh, slowdown this time. Let's see. Epic Cat, Happy Wolf, and Witty, Witty Wolf. The two wolves, are two wolves are chasing a cat with a dolphin right behind them. 
Oh, this is interesting. How are we going to do? Nice job to those leading the way. So let's see. I wonder who Epic Cat is. What is the alternative hypothesis for the two-sided test? Yes. Yes, I love this question. Now, I want you to take note of this notation right here. We are looking for the alternative for the two-sided test. And the two-sided test, a good question here. Can anyone tell me what the p-value is? So for their doing, as he's hacking. <laughs> Can anyone tell me what the p-value is for the two-sided test? Now, that's not the answer to this one. If you know it, this should be pretty easy. And technically, it would be mu male minus mu female um, if you wrote it out. Oh, nice job on finding that p-value for the two-sided test. It's 0.0041. The p-value for the less than is 0 0.0021, and the p-value for the greater than is 0 0.9979. Nice job finding that p-value for the two-sided does not equals test. Good job right there, everyone. Um, now, when you write your known alternative, make sure you use statistical notation if needed. If we're using means, it's mu. If we're using proportions, it's p. And if it's two means, it's mu1 minus mu2. Now, technically, I probably should have put mu male minus mu female. That would be a better null, right, or better null alternative right here. But it's still just the first mean minus the second mean. So mu1 minus mu2. And since we're doing the two-sided, it goes both ways. And look at that does not equal sign. It goes both ways. The null always has the equal sign. The alternative can be greater than, less than, or does not equals to. So the null is the equal sign. This was not the null but the alternative has less than greater than does not equal to. Nice job. And remember, the first part right here for chapters uh, with proportions, means, or difference between two means will be a statistical notation. And then the third part right here, you've got your sign right here, but the third part is a hypothesized value. We are hypothesizing that the difference is equal to zero. So that's got it. That is the alternative for the two-sided test. And make sure to practice this notation if we ask you to write any of them. Epic Cat. No one can beat Epic Cat. Happy Wolf and Witty Wolf. And look at this. We are not crashing. We are not spammed. If someone wanted to write a null using the data, which of these could be used? Oh, good. This is a tricky one. Oh, perfect follow-up. Oh my gosh, what could we, which of these could be a null for this data? Now they, they all have equal signs, but it looks like the first part is different. The last part also has different numbers. But, hmm, well, what do we have here? I don't know. I don't want to say it yet because that'll give it away. Um, down below, we have a bunch of notation. Uh, P is the true proportion. Mu is the true mean. Mu1 minus mu2 is the true difference between two means. And that kind of helps out a lot right here. Um, now, they're testing a value. The, the third part, the last part of it, is a tested value, a hypothesized value. But I see right here that the summary statistics are for just one mean. And the symbol for mean is mu. I tried to give it away in the last few seconds to make sure people have the right answer, but mu is the mean. So they could test the mean and say the mean is equal to some hypothesized value. Nice job. There, there's not two means there. There was just one mean. Um, if we had more data, we could have a second mean. But um, So that was a decent answer there. But remember, it is mu, so it's means, and there was just one mean. That would be like, and this data came from the GPA of UT students. That was the high school GPA of UT students, which is just one sample mean. So since there's one mean, we would say the mean is equal to this. And then what if I said, I want to see if the GP of UT students have gone up. You can write MU in the chat if you want for mu, but go ahead and write in the chat what would be the alternative for the mean for UT students has increased from 3.8. What would be the alternative for that? The mean for UT students has increased from 3.8. How would you write that in statistical notation? Try writing it in the chat to practice. And we'll say that MU is equal to mu. And so we should start seeing those answers appear. Here they come. There we go, exactly, mu greater than 3.8. Nice job on those answers, everyone. And mu equals 3.8, mu greater than 3.8. The other alternatives would be, is it less than 3.8 or is it not equal to 3.8? And remember on the test, you will just write mu. Um, you could copy paste the symbol from online, but it's easier to just write mu for the moment. So let's continue on. Epic cat, happy wolf, and the wolves gotta catch up. When doing a hypothesis test on the mean, what is a condition that must be met? So when doing a hypothesis test on the mean, what is a condition that must be met? 
and I think this is one of my last review questions here that I'm really trying to hammer down when doing a hypothesis test on the mean. So at this point, and I see a lot of people lose points on these and why I'm trying to hammer down a few things, and there's a lot of calculations on here, but we're doing testing on the mean right here, and so you should automatically think, okay, and I've got some good type 1, type 2 error stuff coming up. I'm really excited about those. It is random what questions approach. But I think you guys will get this. This is a bit of a review question. And at this point, you should have it down. It's like, okay, we're doing a hypothesis test on the mean. Random, 10%. And then we stop and think. And we say, okay, wait, I'm doing a mean, which means they're histograms. And I need to check the nearly normal condition right here. So I need to check the nearly normal condition to make sure the distributions are nearly normal and we've got the central limit theorem to back us up on that too. And nice job, good job reviewing this. This is on the mean, so it's nearly normal. I don't think there should be any questions on this one because that's like a super review now. So I'm gonna do another question and we'll see that epic cat. Oh my gosh, are they gonna get one wrong? Maybe not. Five players just hit answer streak eight, nice job. Find the missing p-value. I think this is the last of the missing p-value ones. Here we are. This one should be instantaneous almost. And I did use the same output, which makes it a little bit unfair if you remember it. But you should know these p-value things like this by now. Remember that the less than and greater than you can actually see it add up to one right here. The less than and the greater than add up to one. So 21 and 9979 add up to one or 0 0.0021. Then you could also find the does not equals because if you take the smaller one and you double it, then that is the does not equals. You can't double 0.9979 because that would be too much. P-values are between 0 and 1. They're probabilities. So you can't have a p-value that is greater than 1. So the answer has to be the less than alternative doubled. So if you were to double this one right here, 0 0.0021, which is that tiny area, you would get 0 0.0024. I mean, 0042, I'm reversing numbers in my head right there. 0 0.0042, that is the answer right there. Ask those questions in the chat if you got them. Maybe I'll do one more kind of Kahoot review or something online, but I do have fun doing these. So we'll continue on right here. There still doesn't seem to be many questions, and we're answering as we go. Epic Cat, my gosh. We're, there'll be hard questions coming up, so watch out. Store, oh, here we go. Story time, what is the type two error? Okay, so here we go. In this one right here, you need evidence that the tree is going to die before cutting it down. So you need evidence the tree is going to die before cutting it down. So the null would be that the tree is healthy till you have evidence to cut it down. So let's review. This is just kind of a, I'm gonna write in the chat, null hypothesis, tree is healthy. Alternative hypothesis, tree is dying. I picked a tree falling on a house that didn't look so crazy. I think all those people were all right, but um, that's still not fun. But uh, so the null is that the tree is healthy and you leave it up. The alternative is that the tree is dying. Now I want you to do this right now. In a type one error, the null is true. In a type one error, the null is true. What would be a bad thing to do to a true null? What would be a bad thing to do to a true null? In a type 1 error, the null is true. A bad thing to do would be to what the null if it's true. In a type 1 error, the null is true. It would be bad to what the null. Exactly. In a type 1 error, the null is true. It would be bad to reject it. In a type 2 error, the null is false. Does everyone see that? In a type 2 error, the null is false, and we fail to reject it. So let's think about that. If we go right here, in a type 2 error, the null is false, and we fail to reject it. So I hope I put in the right answer right here. So if the null is false and we fail to reject it, the tree is actually dying, but we think it's healthy. So uh, you leave the tree up and it falls should be the answer. I'm hoping last night I didn't reverse it in my brain or else things are going to get crazier because we have a wrong answer. So in a type 2 error, the null is false, but you fail to reject it. Yes! I know how to do type 1, type 2 error! Um, I just get really afraid I put a wrong answer in the Kahoot. Um, so just say it again with me. In a type 2 error, the null is false, and we fail to reject it. Make sure, there we go. 
It's on the exam prep page. So please, if you would, I want to see some of the I did it in the chat. I want you to hold up. Type one error. The null is what? True. Type two error. The null is false. Does that make sense? Does everyone hear that? And does everyone, did everyone do that? You can do this on the test. You have cheat sheets with your hands. Type one error. The null is true. It would be bad to reject it. Type two error. The null is false. It would be bad to fail to reject it. Do not, do not, do not, do not. Do not put the, the, the code in the chat because we, we might get spammed again. So make sure to be on that. <laughs> Thank you guys for doing it. Don't worry, Melissa. We just make sure we're not putting the code in the chat because uh, we don't want to get spammed as we did last time. So thank you, everyone. So um, had to hop on that. So um, there we go. With that in the mind, does everyone understand type one, type two, or there will be a review of this later on. It's one of my classic examples coming up later on. So did everyone hear that? In a type one, the null is true, and we reject it. In a type two, the null is false, and we fail to reject it. I just want to mention with this one, uh, we did this on the test one time, and we asked someone what would be worse, a type one or type two error. And type one, type two error are contextual. One's not always more worse. More worse, huh. Um, one's not always, uh, yeah, I think I might be right, Grandma. One's, one's not always better, no one's not always worse. It's contextual to the situation you're in. And people said things like, I don't care if the tree hits my neighbor's house. Um, and we were like, oh, wow. Because they were like, I'll leave the tree up. And if it falls, I'm fine with that. And we we're like, oh, that's that's interesting that people chose to leave the tree up knowing it could fall. Because we thought people would rather make a type 1 error. In a type 1 error, the null is true. And we reject it. So in that scenario, the type 1 scenario would be the tree is healthy. Because that's the null I gave. I said the null is that the tree is healthy. So the null is true. And we reject it. So that would be a type 1 error in that scenario. Good deal. Let's do another one. Watch it be the other story time on here. What are the degrees of freedom for the T interval? We got this one, guys and gals. Only 30 seconds here to figure out the degrees of freedom for the T interval. What are the degrees of freedom for this T interval? Nice and quick one right here. You first have to identify what is this. Huh, we're dealing with a one sample mean right here. This is a one sample mean interval. So you will have a formula sheet on the test, and it will tell you how to do the degrees of freedom. But this is one sample mean, so the degrees of freedom are n minus 1. So right here you see n, and n minus 1 is 769. Nice job. Now, we also have the complicated formula one that we never actually do ourselves. That is when we have two means. Two means is the complicated formula, which we won't have you solve. You go to the applet stuff and put it in, um, and then you get the degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom for that was n minus 1, nice job. And the other degrees of freedom we talked about was rows minus 1 times columns minus 1, which is for the chi-squared. So the degrees of freedom with the chi-squared is rows minus 1 times columns minus 1. Uh, one sample t is n minus 1. And then uh, difference between two independent means is a complicated formula, which you do not need to worry about. Well, you would just say this is a complicated formula. So that is right there. Okay, it looks like we'll have a lot of times for questions at the end. Epic cat. Oh my, you're, you're outpacing everyone now. Oh no, we're supposed to put hard questions in here that mix people up. We've got to find out who Epic cat is. They might have such a big lead. Which of the following must be met for the chi-squared test of independence? Now you might be saying to me, Brian, there's multiple answers. <laughs> Brian, there's multiple answers here. Yes, there are multiple answers for this. The chi-squared test. Oh, it might be. It might be. The chi-squared test of independence is when we have categorical, categorical data. I gave away one of the answers right there. To do the chi-squared test of independence, we have to have categorical, categorical data. We also need to look at uh, a certain value and see if it's greater than 5. This is when I start to give away the answers almost totally. When we have the chi-squared test of independence, look for two things. Uh, <laughs> I'm just clicking the answer each time. So... Look for, if to do the chi-squared test of independence, you need to see a mosaic plot, and you need to see also, um, a lot of times, a contingency table. And with a contingency table, you'll have the count data inside of it, and we'll usually give you expected cell counts. So those two right there are cell counts, which um, you should have high enough expected cell counts then. Ah, we tricked a lot of people here. 
Um, I just give myself a $5 Starbucks gift card. Um, this one right here is count data or expected cell count. When do we use success failure? When we do confidence intervals or tests on what? Success failure is for confidence intervals or tests on, I want to see that word in the chat. I want you guys reviewing this and knowing it. Success failure is confidence interval or tests on, and we'll see in the chat in just a second, all of a sudden we start seeing, uh, not means, uh, confidence intervals or tests on, maybe no one knows, proportions. Confidence rolls or tests on proportions is success failure. Nice job, Taylor. Nice job. It seems like people are, this is a good reviewer here. But nearly normal is confidence interval or tests on means. So these are, this is a great review right here. Just to make sure you guys know when to use which condition. Success failure is confidence intervals or, intervals or tests on proportions. Nearly normal is confidence intervals or tests on means or, or two sample means. Then you have to do nearly normal twice. And count data and expected cell count is for the chi-squared test of independence, which means you'll see the mosaic plot or the contingency table. You could see one or the other, but um, that is it right there. So Jacob, we try to keep it on topic here, Jacob. The answer is it does not matter, but we keep it on topic. So we will continue on. Interpret the interval in context of the problem. So interpret this interval in context. So I want you guys to try to do this with this interval. This, and I want to see this in the chat. I want to see you guys do this in the chat. I know this is a freebie question, but I want to see you write it in the chat. I'm going to let someone write it out in the chat. I am. I want to start with that I am. I'm going to write the blank interval in the chat. I am blank percent confident that the blank is contained in the interval blank to blank. So there we go. I am blank percent confident that blank is contained in the interval blank to blank. So who can do this? Who can possibly interpret this interval for us? I am blank percent confident that the blank, and this is the GPA, the mean GPA, the true mean GPA of UT students, is contained in the interval blank to blank. Fill in the blanks. They won't be like that on the test. <laughs> Thanks. I'm about at 80 or 90 at my best. I told someone I could do 100 words per minute, and then they, they asked me to do it, and I only got like 90. Oh my gosh. I like it. Nice job, Olinka. Um, I am 95% confident that the true mean GPA of UT students is contained in the interval. Wow, that is A plus work right there. Perfect. Yes, I got a mechanical keyboard. <laughs> I got I got a mechanical keyboard right here. Yep. Got a. I think it's got blue. I think it's blue. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, yep. Hardcore right here. Um, so I am 95% confident the true mean GPA of UT students is contained in the interval. Exactly. So that is what is going on right there. Nice job on that answer. And in, for those reviewing, this works for anything. We could give different intervals. I am 90% confident the true proportion of UT students who own a cat is contained in the interval 0.22 to 0.35. Make sure that middle part, the what you're talking about, is the hard part for people. Um, so, oh no, 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 did I not check one of the I did it answers? Oh my god, okay, 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 Epic Cat, I think, has pretty much won this game. I made a mistake, guys, of course there's always gotta be one mistake in the Kahoot, I'm sorry, guys, it's been a crazy week, um, sorry to, and of course it's the first one that it ordered randomly, um, I'm sorry, guys, that's a mistake on my part, I was like, why did so many people get it wrong? I, Epic Cat, oh no, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry, Olienka. You've been doing a ep great job. Epic Cat's been leading the way. I'm so sorry about that, everybody. That is my mistake. Uh, just didn't see that. Didn't click one of the answers. Um, luckily, it's kind of a runaway game. <laughs> it's kind of a little bit. Um, yeah, they lost their streak because I don't know how to make a Kahoot. Very sorry about that, guys. Uh, I just forgot to click one button. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I will say this. If you come by my office, I do a free candy in my office. So we got free candy... SMC 209, come by, get free candy anytime. So, oh my gosh, that, yeah, that's, that's some interesting stuff right there, Aaron. So we got a, whoo, fun times at UT. Uh, so I'm very sorry about that, everybody. I just, you ever feel that hot, like, like, oh no, what did I do thing go through you? So, um, very sorry about that. Uh, but we got a fun or two, a few more fun questions coming up right here. What is the miss? Ooh, this is a tough one. So we should have done this one first. People would have lost their streak on this one. 
This is a tough one. It's not too tough when you know the trick. When you know the trick on this one, it's not too tough. A test statistic is always a difference standardized. A test statistic is always a difference standardized. So when you look at the formula, we have the mean minus the hypothesized mean over the standard error of the mean. That's not this problem, but that's a different one. Y bar minus mu naught over S over square root of N. And this formula is Y bar one minus Y bar two over the standard error. Now, what is the top part of that equation? The top part of that equation is the difference. Y bar one minus Y bar two is the difference. This value you see right here is the difference between these two means. That, that's what that is. Females, as we talked about earlier, is higher than males, so it makes the difference negative. What this is right here is the standard error. This right here is the formula square root of S sub one squared over N sub one plus S sub two squared over N sub two. So that is the formula right there on your formula sheet. That is the standard error of the difference, which can be used in the confidence interval. Basically two of them would be, you know, adding that on gets you there. But all you have to do to find the T ratio is divide. And what do you notice? This is basically negative 0.23 over 0.023, and it's basically negative 10. Pause the video there if you need, but basically that's why I chose this, and that's why I made the numbers. I actually kept reworking the numbers on that. I wanted it to be very, very close to negative 10, um, so it's a very easy solve if you just divide the two numbers, but the difference standardized. Did you guys find that one to be pretty easy? Um, how do you do it again? Uh, make sure to review the video, and I'll explain here, because uh, this video will be posted, but you do the difference divided by the standard error of the difference. So it was point, negative 0.23 over 0.023, and I'll write that here in the chat. So let's put that right here, negative 0.023 divided by negative 0.023, and there it is right there. Thank you, Elizabeth, thank you very much. So the difference divided by the standard error of the differences. The difference divided by the standard error of the difference. Nice job, thank you so many people in the chat. Love it when you put those answers in there. Any other questions? And Ahmed, thank you for the good question. A lot of people might be wondering that. Okay, let's continue on. Epic Cat still leading the way, even though Brian tried to Tried to change the game. Maybe Epic Cat cl didn't click the red one. What is the null hypothesis? Oh, good. We've got some. I think this is for means. Oh, now this one is super easy. This is something you should know like that. I should have put 60 seconds on here. Um, I don't think the skip will do it, but you should know instantaneously the null has the something. I don't want to give it away yet, but you should know instantaneously. Try in the chat right now to write the null. But use male and female. Try to write the null in the chat using male and female. Like using mu, male. And that's probably what you should do on the test. I probably should have put mu, male, minus mu, female on here. But um, put in the... I thought it would be too much to look at. And I was like, I like the subscript too anyways in Word. But um, try writing the null with mu, male, and mu, female. So let's see the null in the chat. It will help you practice. And remember, you're going to be putting mu on the test. And this is when we have means. So mu is for means. This is the difference between two means. Um, you can also see the T ratio again. Nice job right there, Olyanka. Great job with all the answers. Exactly. Great job writing it. Um, if you notice right here, this T ratio is also interesting because what is 16 times 3? It's 48. So if you were to divide these two, you would get this T ratio. Just kind of review of the previous problem that negative 0.047 divided by 0 0.016 is negative three about. If you, if you carry all the decimals, you will get this exact answer. We can also see the p-values that we've talked about before where you double them. Um, so the hypothesis right here is going to be mu one or mu male minus mu female equals zero. And so we don't write this one out in words though. We do this one in statistical notation. I wanna make this very, very, very clear that the only one we do in words is chapter 22 and you only say gender is independent of breaking a bone for the null. And then you can say, as I usually do, gender is not independent of breaking a bone. So in this one, we use statistical notation. So make sure to use statistical notation for this one. Very, very, very important. Good stuff. How are we looking? I think we're doing great. We're so near the end. We've been flying. There's been so few questions, but feel free to ask them. 
I feel like everyone's paying like very strong attention. Epic Cat and Dr. Fox. Dr. Fox, we haven't seen you yet. Story time. This is my favorite one. This is the twig in the woods one. Okay. So you're walking through the woods. Hopefully I don't make a mistake on this one either. And your friend's like, dude, that's a snake. And you're like, ah, I don't know. You're like, I don't know, man. That right there, that I don't think that's a snake. That's not a snake. And he's like, no, that's totally a snake. And so the knoll, if you think if you're in the woods, the knoll is probably uh, pretty much everything is twig. So the knoll would be twig. And the alternative would be snake. So, because, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, twigs in the woods. So, yeah, it's probably a twig. You would need evidence it's a snake before you believed it's a snake. I'm looking at it, I'm like, wait, is that a snake? I'm a little bit scared. You're looking at it. So what would a type 1 error be? So you got to repeat to yourself, in a type 1, the null is true. And if you're looking at the chat right now, you should say, in a type 1, the null is true. So you should say to yourself, it is true. I'm letting you say it to yourself. It is true that it is a twig. It is true. And you can write these answers in the chat if you want. Remember, here to learn. It is true that it is a twig. In a type 1 error, the null is true. What would be the wrong thing to do in a t if it's true? If the null is true, the wrong thing to do would be to reject the null. So in a type 1 error, you reject the null. So I, in a type 1 error, the null is true, but I reject it. So it is a twig, but I believe it's a stink. So let's see here. Let's see here. You think it is not a snake. And it is not. Oh my gosh, how did I word these? <laughs> um, so in a type two, in type one error, we think it is a snake, but it's not. Okay, it should be that answer right there. Sometimes I even get tripped up on the wordings on these. And it's been a crazy week. My students know why it's been such a crazy week. I, I told them. It's, whew. So, so I'm just waiting for the answer too. I'm like, okay, you think it's a snake, but it's not. Because you reject the null. I'm pretty sure I got this one right. I'm just like, oh no, after that last one. Boom, we got it. Oh no, wait, 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 wait. Oh no, this is, we gotta watch out here, guys. Oh, okay, wait, wait. <laughs> Arsenal, I don't even know what that is. Um, okay, wait. I want us to repeat here. This is, this is, I, we gotta pause, everybody. We gotta pause on this. This is one of our pause moments. Because we got a 50 50 shot here where it could be just random chance that people got this or not. But I want you guys to repeat to me. I want to see this in the chat. I want to see people, people type in it. We're going to need like 10 people type in this before we move on. In a type 1, the null is what? I want to see you write this out. In a type 1, the null is what? In a type 1, the null is true. I want to see this all in the chat. In a type 1, the null is true. And you should just do it. We got this cheat sheet right here. In a type 1, the null is true. This is a common mistake on the test. Just reversing type 1, type 2 error. It's so easy to reverse. Even I, and I want to make this clear, even I fear that I reverse it sometimes. You have to slow down and be like, in a type one, the null is true. So remember the null is twig, right? Null is twig. So tell me, Brian, it is a twig, but what are we gonna do in the, with, with the type one error? It is a twig, the null is true, but we are going to what the null? We are going to reject the null. I like Abby right there. Brian, it's a twig. The null is true. That is a twig. But we are going to reject it, and we're going to think it's a snake. Exactly. <laughs> like, don't freak out. Just reject. <laughs> yeah. No, it's... Uh, I, I, I always want you guys to get as many points as possible, and I realize these are... Um, well, the thing is, is we would freak out. In this scenario, we would kind of freak out and think it's a snake, because we're going to reject the null. It, it is a twig. We, d we don't know that. We're, we're going to look at it and we're going to say, oh no, I reject the null because this is type 1 error. We reject the null. So we think it's a snake. Uh, we reject the null in a type 1. Does that make sense to everybody? Type 1, type 2 error, a lot of times people just lose points because they reverse them. And it's a very quick and easy way to lose points on the test. Um, just remember, in a type 1, the null is true and we'd reject it. In a type 2, the null is false and we'd fail to reject it. So that is type one, type two error right there. So there we go. In a type two, uh, the null is false. So in a type two, now tell me what is false right here. In a type two, I'm typing so slowly now. In a type two, the null is false. So is it a twig? In a type two, the null is false. This is type two with this problem now. In a type two, the null is false. So it's not a twig, it is a snake. So it is a snake. But we think it's not. Does that make sense? In a type 2, 
it is a snake, but we think it's not. Um, so lots of great stuff. Okay, let's do one more example here and let's look at this. Um, so here's an example right here for everybody. Uh, this is another classic example, but we have a type. Um, let's do type one, type two with this. So teachers have to give evidence you're cheating. They can't just say like you're cheating and we're going to say you're cheating and you have to show that you're not. They usually have to say, here's the evidence you're cheating. So in this scenario, the null would be not cheater until we have evidence of cheater. With this in mind, what would be a type one? I want you to tell me what a type one error. Just, I want you to do it without me for the moment. What would be a type one in this scenario? What would be a type one error? You got it correct. Hannah, excellent job writing that out. Um, you're not a cheater, but they think you are excellent because the null is true. You're not a cheater, but they say you are. In type one error, the null is true. You're not a cheater, but we reject it and say we have evidence. Hannah, perfect job. Type two error in this scenario. I want you guys to think it. I want you to explain it and ask yourself. In a type two, the null is false and we fail to reject it. So just like Hannah did, excellent job on the answer, Hannah. So we've been making mods as we go. <laughs> I do like that. I do like that. Um, so um, uh, in this scenario, let's pretend it's a test question. I do like that, Stephanie. If this was a test question, type two is when they think you're not a cheater, but you are correct. In a type two, the null is false, but we fail to reject it. So it is false that you're not a cheater. Um, so you are a cheater, but they think you're not. Epic cat, epic cat. We we want to. We're going to find out who the epic cat is and make sure to email me or announce yourself in the chat. Probably announce yourself in the chat before it's over. That way, we don't have like 50 people emailing me saying I'm epic cat. Where's my gift card? Um, I'll have to be like I got 10 emails from epic cat. Um, so probably at the end of uh, we'll find out who they are. I think we've only got two more and they're they are rock starring this out except for Rockstar Shark. Oh, this is the last one. What are the three things that control power? Big question. I'll just hand it, go through the next office. What are the three things that control power? And this is not the thing that use, is used for power. What are the three things that control power? And I feel like a lot of people might answer the wrong answer here because one of these is used for the formula for power. I, I wish I could have written more for this. Um, <laughs> some Batman right there. Um, so with this right here, let's talk about the three things that control power. One of them is alpha. That is the percent of time we reject the null. Increasing alpha will increase the type one error, but if we reject more, we'll fail to reject less. So alpha is the percent of time we reject the null. Sample size is how much data we collect. If we collect more data, we'll better understand. We'll just have more data and that makes our statistics more powerful because you better understand your population and can reject a false null if you have more data. Um, so, oh no, Missy loves Starbucks. Um, effect size is the true difference between the null, and no, excuse me, the effect size is the difference between the truth and the null. I almost said something incorrect there. The effect size is the difference between the truth and the null. And I like to use for this example, um, playing uh, my friend Kobe in basketball. We haven't, I don't know, we need to set up a game since he retired, but I'm not friends with Kobe. But if I were to play Kobe in basketball, that would be in a big effect size between our skills. Would it be easier to see who's better between Kobe and Brian or Brian and his brother Darren? That's so crazy, 11, 11, 11, 6. Which would be easier to see who's better between Brian and Kobe or Brian and Darren? Which would be easier to see who's better? Which would be easier between Brian and who? And we should see in the chat, it's pretty obvious. It'd be Brian and Kobe. Would be easier to see who's better. He's only, he's only a little bit better. But between Brian and Kobe Bryant, um, there's a bigger difference. If the null is that there's no difference, it'd be easier to observe that true difference that Kobe's way better than Brian. So it would be easy to reject the null and say Kobe's better. But if my brother and I are kind of similar, it'd be harder to reject the null. So effect size is the true difference um, between the null and the alternative. Oh, excuse me, aye, aye, aye. The effect size is the difference between the null and uh, the truth. The effect size, my brain is just going to autopop for half moments. The effect size is the difference between the null and the truth. And the bigger that difference is, the easier it is to reject the null because you're further away. Beta, beta is actually a type two error. So beta is a type two error and the formula for power is one minus beta. So the formula for power is one minus beta. 
And right here, beta is just a type 2 error. It's, it's used to calculate power, but it doesn't control power. You, you don't actually manipulate beta. Um, you, the only way you change beta is by changing sample size alpha and effect size. Um, all those change beta, which controls power. So beta is the chance of a type 2 error, and 1 minus beta is power. So that has it. Let's We'll go for another 5-10 minutes, or we'll see what questions you guys have, guys and gals. And look at this. Epic Cat, Rocket Star Shark, but I think Epic Cat had an amazing streak going. Um, they only missed three questions, and one of them was probably due to me. Good job on getting all the results. Nice job, BG. Thank you very much. I'm, I hope everyone had a great time. We're going to hop over here, and we'll go to the face cam right here. So I think... Is that what you guys are seeing now? Let's see. Yes. I'm just in darkness now. Um, but what questions? I'm mailing up a cat my PhD. <laughs> so Horizon, feel free to email us if you have questions. BS at utk.edu if you have questions. Now I can't type and look. There we go. So um, if you have questions, Horizons, feel free to do that. So glad to have you here. Um, I might do another one, Elizabeth. Um, I feel like maybe this was so early that people... Uh, we might try to do that. We might try to do it on Sunday or something. It's pretty fun doing these. Um, fuck, it's showing in my Pearson accurate. Uh, currently for my class, the my grade in my Pearson's not accurate. Um, for your class might be accurate. I should probably be working on that later tonight. Um, I think my class, I sent an email out to them explaining why I've been a little bit behind on everything. Um, so yeah, we'll probably do another. I'll change up the questions. Um, but I hope this helped with all the conditions. Is it this light is shining? Woo, hot light. Um, so I think that light's shining in my face. <laughs> so, um, so there's a nice spreadsheet that calculates it. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, under the Dylan mentions under the, um, what is it? What is that little tab called? More from UT or something. We, I have a, I've created a calculator thing and, uh, you should see it down low, but I have a little calculator thing that will calculate your grade for you. And something on my Pearson, yeah, it's more info from UTK or something, or um, it's at the very top. Once you click that tab, it'll be at the top, and it'll say Grade Calculator. So we have created a Grade Calculator. It'll tell you what you need to make on the final, all that good stuff right there. Maybe we'll try to do one on Sunday night or something. We'll try to, we'll try to figure out maybe late night Sunday review. Who knows? That'd be pretty interesting. But we had a good many people in the Kahoot. I, I miss us having 300. Maybe we had some A last time, and we had about 300 people watching last time. So glad we even had someone from in California watching. That was pretty cool. So Epic Cat, are you there? Epic Cat? I'll stay on for a few more minutes, and we'll see if there's questions. I wonder if this will change my green screen outlook. What happens when I turn off this light? I'm watching it in the video now. Oh, green screen still works. Any other questions before we end this? Hope you... Hope everyone had a great time. I did. It's pretty fun, and we're losing people now, but that's all right. Remember, this is recorded, and I think YouTube will transcribe it. The grade calculator is on my Pearson. If anyone can tell us that tab right now, I'm well, actually I can go over to mine. I'm on a second computer. You wear a green shirt. <laughs> oh, I should have done that. Oh, I should have. I don't know if I have an all green shirt. I have a Hollister green shirt. Um, um. I'm thinking if it's the same color green as my green screen that I'm using. Um, the tab on my Pearson is... Oh, my plasma's got a little burn in from this. Um, so the tab is miscellaneous stuff from UT. Miscellaneous stuff from UT, you'll see stat 201 grade calculator. Miscellaneous stuff from UT, stat 201 grade calculator. Uh, the specific exams are 16, uh, comma, 17, comma, 18... Comma 19. You guys got me all self-conscious as I type. Oh, and then the business analytics uh, overview. Um, comma da, 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 tools and techniques. So those are the question, the chapters on the exam. That is everything on the exam. Anything else? Ask all those questions if you've got them. Um, here to answer any and all questions right now, kind of quick. Yeah, I, I, I think Canvas is down. I, I went to it 
and I couldn't log in uh, around 1.30 or so. I couldn't log into Canvas. So I think it's down. It's apparently it's down. I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's like it's been down for maybe an hour or two or two-ish hours now. Any last questions? Ask anything you want about statistics. Good luck. Thank you, Horizon. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it, Horizon. Fun times. So, uh, oh, wow, Stephanie. So this is a great question. Um, <laughs> I'm probably going to go in on Tuesday and order pizzas and maybe call, like, say to the TAs, uh, we're just going to all work together. And um, I might just say, hey, guys, we're going to get pizza, maybe even um, mellow mushroom pizzas or something, like some good pizzas. Not that any other pizzas are bad. Maybe Hard Knocks pizza. Um, but we're going to probably just work and all grade the exams because exams need to go up pretty soon. And I'll tell the TAs, like, hey, we're going to have a grading party. And that's probably one of the easiest ways to grade is say, hey, everybody, come in. We're going to order you pizza and we're going to get this graded. Because uh, we're one of the last exams. If it was like Monday of this well that was study day if it was tuesday a few days ago we'd have like the weekend to grade but we're gonna have to grade pretty quickly and so um i'll probably be helping grading too so i'll be i'll be in i'll be in the mix um so i mean good question what kind of questions for the business analytics overview i really think the best thing to do is um i do have a video on it for my class um i can maybe grab that and put it in the in the thing here um so let me go to i'm gonna put this in the chat why does it say captured lectures coming soon? Oh, wait, that's not where we're supposed to go. So I'm going to put the link to my business analytics overview in the chat. Um, whoops. Video lecture. Okay. So if you want a really good review of the business analytics overview, um, the link is now in the chat. And so you should click this link and it'll bring you to the business analytics overview. And that is a very good kind of uh, quick preview. You know, we watched, um, we talked about Moneyball and how that, you know, Billy Bean uh, with Paul De Podesta, um, <laughs> John, that'd be great, John. Um, Paul De Podesta really changed the game with Moneyball using analytics. We talked about how, you know, uh, jobs in business analytics are just growing. And we don't just say that because we're like, jobs in business analytics is, are growing. It, it's really true. Because if you can analyze data, we have a quote, I think, from the, one of the people from Pilot, I believe, Who's like, you know, people who have data analytics skills are priceless in the marketplace because you're justifying your answers. You're saying, like, here's what I think, why, and here's the data to back it up. So it's very powerful. If you notice, we had a PhD social psych person in here, and that's my undergrad is psychology. But um, they, they kind of maybe wanted to brush up on some statistics and hear these concepts again. It never hurts to, to go over statistics. And um, I thought it was kind of cool um, because statistics is used across all disciplines. And beyond that, uh, just business analytics is used. Um, yeah, uh, business analytics is used in business. So you're welcome. You're welcome. Any other last questions? We've got 31 watching. Ask those questions if you got them. I think we might be good. Well, we'll try to set something up later. We, maybe it was so early that we didn't have everybody. Maybe we'll do a Sunday night one. We'll have some fun, and I'll, I'll keep you guys updated. Always feel free to send me those suggestions. Send. Here we go. Send suggestions. Oh, I can't type today. <laughs> send suggestions. You guys got me so self-conscious of how fast I type now. To bs at utk.edu. Any suggestions you have, send them to me at bs at utk.edu, and I'll be happy to, to think about them and try to increase what we do. Have a great day, everyone, and we're going to stop streaming now. Go back here and we'll say...